My name is Brian Coward. I'm the EDM product manager at Makino. I want to welcome everyone today to the Makino Experience Center in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Today we're going to be talking about the new HyperEye wire EDM control. So first I'm going to do a little presentation and we're going to go over some new features of the new HyperEye as well as uh, the QV assist window. Uh, after my presentation, we're gonna go out to the uh, showroom and Mark Elsenbrook, one of the application engineers here at Makino, is gonna give us a demo on the machine. He's gonna show us, a, go through the process of starting a job and then also highlight some of the features of the QV assist window. So first, I want to talk about the, the new features of the new HyperEye control. So right here, you can see in the picture, that's the old HyperEye. Uh, it has more of a 3D, complex 3D look. Uh, it's more in line with older smartphones and older Windows products. Uh, and it has a lower resolution, not quite as sharp. The new HyperEye is right there on the right hand side. You can see it has a cleaner, more of a 2D look, more in line with new Apple devices and Windows 10. Also on the new control, uh, we unified the color codes uh, of all the alarm and reset messages that you get on the control. On the older control, the color codes were not unified. We've fixed that. And with the new uh, Windows 10 version, you get a much sharper resolution. When you're booting up the machine, we have parallel processing. Well, what does that mean? Uh, it means that when the machine's booting up, this boot screen will come up and once it gets to a certain point in the boot process, you're able to home the machine without waiting for the complete uh, boot of the HyperEye control. So it saves you time during startup. Another new feature is the user profile login window. The old control has a login user profile, but when you would log off, the, the screen would go blank. With the new HyperEye, I can log off of the control, but the control will remain visible, which allows someone to see what's going on uh, during machining. Uh, next is the alarm message bar. So the alarm message bar has now been moved to the top of the page, used to be at the bottom of the page. This allows the operator to see the alarms much better. Uh, it's at a higher, more at eye level. We've also changed the background of the alarm bar which has made it a brighter yellow, which again allows the operator to see it, especially from a further distance on a, the opposite side of the shop. There's also been a change in the keyboard design on the new HyperEye. You can see the new one is on the uh, left there, the old one's on the right. And what we've done is we've made uh, the buttons more streamlined uh, and it's easier to use for the operator. Another new feature is the external uh, applications and taskbar. So applications such as this floating keyboard here or HyperConnect, if you were to have the optional software of HyperConnect, is activated from this taskbar. In the past, you would have to go to a different location on the control to activate it. Right here, it's always in this uh, task, taskbar, so it makes it convenient for the operator. Next is the like, light and dark mode that's available based on operator preference. Uh, this also can make a difference based on shop lighting. Sometimes if it's too bright, if you had the light mode, you couldn't see the screen very well. Uh, so you have the option. Another new feature is the improved icon quality and details. So the machine function buttons uh, are illustrated now with, uh, next to the actual wording of the function. Uh, to make it easier to understand what that particular function does. The biggest uh, improvement on the new HyperEye versus the old would be the QV Assist window. And the QV Assist window is a quick view dynamic content assistant. So what does that do for me? It's always going to show the relevant information and functions and will only display items that are required based on the current machine status. It makes it easy to find the information and the functions that the operator would need because it will automatically change as needed. There's no need to search through all the pages. Some functions you would have to go to a screen 
page, dialogue, sub-dialogue to get to the particular function you were looking for, now it's going to automatically come up for the operator. This is a big, big help to new operators. It's going to assist a new operator in the running of the machine because it makes it much easier for them to learn the control because the functions that are required based on that machine status will come up automatically for the operator. So that's the end of the quick presentation of showing you what's new with the HyperI. Now we're going to go out to the showroom and Mark is going to give us a demonstration of this new control. So Mark, take it away. Thank you, Brian. Um, so what we're going to be looking at today is the HyperI control and, and really how we've updated it, mainly focusing on this assist panel. Okay. So depending on what screen we're on, what part of the operation we're in, this assist panel is going to change to assist us in the operation of running the machine. So right now on the preparation page, uh, what it's showing us is our major consumables, how much life is left on them. It's also going to show us when we last ran our taper jig. Um, and our taper jig includes vertical alignment, taper compensations, all of that. Um, and then also when we last ran our tension calibration as well. So it's important to make sure we maintain those things, check them every month or so to make sure that they're, they're staying up to date. So moving over to the setup page, here it's gonna show us, um, we call it a macro panel, okay? So this is gonna show us any additional settings that are associated with the pickup cycle that is highlighted. So as I shift between these, um, we can see it, it changes depending for this particular part, we're gonna do a whole pickup, okay? So here we can select possibly additional approach lengths. Um, if we wanna clock our rotation, we can index it um, 45 degrees. So I'll put a 45 in there and then we'll run our pickup. Okay, so once our pickup cycle is done, we can go to the run screen and this is gonna show us our manual mode uh, panel. And on this one, it's gonna show us uh, where we can set our soft limits, assist with any uh, manual functions that we need to set before we start machining. So if I turn on my positive X limit, I can see here that it turns on the red line. It shows me where that limit is within our workspace. Okay, it also shows us our Z position and also what our machine Z coordinate is as well. So I'm gonna return our, our head back to our work position. And we can see here, we can actually physically see where our head is and where it moved to. All right, once we're in position, I can take the machine out of manual mode, and this is gonna be our pre-machining panel, okay? So I'm gonna load in our program. Once it's loaded in, I'm gonna hit auto scale. It's gonna refresh the graphics. It's gonna show me how much wire length this specific job is going to use, the machining time, and then also, again, the major consumables at any point during that cycle time if we're gonna run out of them. So now I'm gonna pick the door up and we can run our program. So once I hit start on the hand box, the assist panel is going to change to the machining panel and it's gonna show us our total machining time, our estimated time until our next stop. So in this case, in our program, we have an M01. It's gonna stop at that. Um, it also gives us the ability to turn on different functions that might assist with uh, starting our program, such as the approach function. So that's gonna dial all of our settings back for a set amount of distance. It's gonna help the wire ease into the workpiece. All right, so now that we're well into the cut, let's see what would happen if we accidentally broke wire or if we ran out of wire, what would happen? So here we have a wire break. We can see here that the assist panel changed to uh, what we're gonna call the machine alarm panel, okay? So in the machine alarm panel, it's gonna show us any alarms that come up and then also a variety of different functions that are gonna assist depending on the issue that happened. So what we had was a wire break. What I can do is turn on return wire break. But if this was, you know, uh, wire replacement, say our spool of wire ran out, these are the buttons and the functions that we would need to replace the spool of wire. Same thing with our filters. If our filters ran out, we would use these buttons to replace them. So I'm gonna turn on return wire break and hit the start button. Okay, so this is, our, this is gonna be our operator stop panel, okay? So with this, it's gonna show us different functions for a scenario where we would stop the program, where the operator would wanna either place a magnet, remove a slug, 
different functions like that. So the first one being the cutoff function, this is gonna lower our flushing pressure. Again, dial back our settings so that we don't get a lot of turbulence when we're trying to cut off our slug. We can also turn on um, our lower flushing for our slug removal, okay? And additional settings just for different threading applications. If we do have any issues with the wire brake, this will also assist with that. So I'm gonna hit the start button and continue our program. All right, so as we finish up our program here, we're again gonna see our assist panel transition to our post machining information. So here we have our total machining time and any stops that we may have had in there. So it tells us, breaks it up, how the, the machining process went. Total machining time, machining path, wire consumption, and then also the number of wire breaks that also occurred. So all this information can actually be exported and saved. So you can look at this you know, along the line if this job comes up again, you can compare data. So that concludes our demonstration of the new HyperEye control and our assist panel. I'm gonna send it back to Brian for any closing questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, now Mark and myself are available for any questions that you might have uh, concerning the new HyperEye control. Okay, uh, thank you, Mark, for taking us through the machine and uh, showing the new HyperEye uh, functionality of the QV Assist. Uh, so we are available for any questions that anyone may have uh, concerning the the, uh, the improvements to the HyperEye wire EDM control. Um, if you look at the top right hand side of your screen, there there is a chat area and a Q and A area. Feel free to enter in any questions that you may have about um, the presentation that we had for you here today. Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions right now, but I do have one that came in prior to the presentation. Uh, and this is a question that we get asked a lot about this uh, software um, is, can this be upgraded on my older machine? And the answer to that is yes and no. Uh, it depends on how old your machine is and uh, what version uh, you're at. So there is a, a line that um, you can uh, upgrade to. Uh, you have to have a machine that has a Windows 10 um, and has the proper uh, hardware for the control. So. Um, if you have an older machine and you're interested in upgrading it, um, you know, you would have to contact us and we could tell you whether uh, your machine is uh, eligible to be upgraded to this um, software. All right, so we have another question here um, uh, asking, uh, is the EW200A generator with the new Hyper-I? Um, no. So um, currently, that is a new generator that's coming out um, for Makino. Um, it currently is not on uh, any existing products uh, that we are selling. Um, our generator is an EW100A. Uh, this is exclusively uh, an upgrade to the functionality of the software itself. Okay. Uh, any other questions, comments uh, anyone would have um, about this presentation? Um, oh, here's one. Can JPEG or PNG files, etc., image files be embedded directly into your program to display on secondary screen, like on a Haas? Um, yes, so you can, <clears throat> if you have a second screen, um, you there is a feature that you can add um, PDFs, pictures, anything that you would like uh, to add. We can add that into the control, and then you can have access to display that. You don't necessarily need a second screen. You could do that on um, a, mach a machine that just has one screen. Uh, you would just access that page and it'll bring it up on top of the control. But yes, you can load specific things that you would like to have access to or your operators to have access to, and then you can view them on the control. 
And then another question about system software can upgrade to from 1117-1 onwards. Uh, on the presentation it says 1301 software. We do have all machines with OS 11. Okay, so we would have to look at your individual machines and see where they're at. Uh, it's not so much of where the software, your existing software is at. It's really more about the hardware that you have. So we would have to look up each machine that you have, look up the serial number, and we can determine uh, if this can be upgraded. So it's really a hardware issue. It's not really a software issue. Okay. Uh, does not look like there's any other questions. Um, I want to thank everyone for taking time today uh, for this quick presentation about the new HyperI uh, Wire EDM control. Uh, if you have any other questions about it or if you want um, to get um, detail about whether your machine is upgradable or not, please shoot me an email uh, with your machine serial numbers and we can find that out for you uh, and let you know if we can uh, upgrade your machine for you. So uh, thank everyone and uh, have a great day.